Hey, what's up everybody? It's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell down below. This is a very old YouTube channel. We've been doing videos here for eight years, and that was way before you had to subscribe and way before you had to click that bell. So if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe and click that bell so that you receive all of the video updates that we release every single week. Okay, we are finally here. It is week 13, which means it is max week. For the past 12 weeks, you have been going through this program and building up to this point. You have been increasing your strength in the squat, bench press, and deadlift, and now we start to actually test and see how much stronger we have become on those lifts. Now, max week is extremely easy to explain, but I just wanna go over some details first, some general over, uh, uh, over encompassing uh, ideas to your max week. So first and foremost, we want to make sure that you are maxing on different days. Do not treat this like a powerlifting meet where you're going to squat, bench, and deadlift in the same day. We don't want to do that. You want to make sure we've been doing, most of us at least have been doing a Monday, Wednesday, Friday split. Monday has been squats, Wednesday has been bench, and Friday has been deadlift. Keep that same thing here where you're maxing your squat on Monday, maxing your bench on Wednesday, and maxing your deadlift on Friday. Okay, keep it real simple. Keep it to the same schedule that you have had this entire preseason training plan. All right, next, we want you to max out and then get out. So what I mean by that is you're gonna go in the gym, you're gonna do your normal warm up that you would normally do uh, during your training days, and then you're going to hit a one rep max. You're gonna push it to as high as you can possibly get on each of those lifts, and then you're gonna leave. We don't wanna see any accessory work, we don't wanna see any extra work, we don't wanna see uh, any you know bodybuilding stuff afterwards, no curling, no ab stuff, no core stuff. Don't worry about any of that. Save your energy for future days, save your energy for later in the week, because your body is going to be taxed. Even though you are only doing one exercise, you are going to be stressing your body to a whole new level that it has not experienced in the past couple of months. So make sure that you just hit your one rep max, go as heavy as you possibly can, and then leave. You're done after that. Finally, this is very self-explanatory. I don't know if I spelled that right. I'm way too reliant on spell check now nowadays, but this is very self-explanatory, okay? We're gonna explain to you how I do it. You might have a different way of doing it. You might think something might work better with your team or with your athletes in your specific gym, but this is how I always choose my attempts and choose what weight is going to be on the bar during my max weeks. So it's gonna be the same for squat. It's gonna be the same for bench and for deadlift. We're gonna show you in the next clip just to explain everything to you, but it's gonna be the same rules that apply for all three lifts on the three different days. Okay, so here's what it's gonna look like. And again, it doesn't matter if we're talking about squat, bench, or deadlift. What I want you to do first is to look back at previous weeks. Remember, I've been telling you for the entire three months here that you need to be writing things down. So I want you to go back and look at previous weeks. Last week was a deload, week 12. Okay, not really gonna get a lot from that. But the week before that, you actually did a little bit heavier than your two rep max. A couple weeks before that, you found your two rep max. A couple weeks before that, we were going really heavy with things like triples. A few weeks before that, and as we get into the beginning, if you flip backwards, you get to see what your athletes were doing for some very heavy weight. And based on that, based on, especially on what we did two weeks ago, when we went over your two rep max, you should have at this point a good idea of what an estimated one rep max is going to be. So the example that I always use for squat is say you squatted 300 pounds for a two rep max. So 300 pounds was your two rep max. If you did 105%, that's 315 pounds. That should have been a very easy one rep max. Okay, so now you have an idea. This is a very easy one rep max. I would put that as either my second to last or my third to last attempt because we know your athletes got it for one rep. We know it was really easy. They should be very confident with this weight. So based on that, what I would do is I would add about 10% to that. So another 30 pounds on top of that is gonna be about 345. I would say 345 is a good estimated one rep 
max. Now, depending on how they handled that weight two weeks ago, this might be a very easy estimated one rep max. This might be a little bit tricky, but we're gonna leave it right there, okay? So now, once we have that estimated one rep max, what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock 10% off of that one rep max, okay? So we already know if we subtract you know, 30 to 35 pounds off that, we're only gonna get back to about 315. So estimated one rep max is 345. Okay, so that is your max attempt. That's gonna be heavier than your athletes have done this entire training block. So that's gonna be a good one rep max for this training block. Now, you may go heavier than that, that's totally okay. But what I'm gonna do is, the first thing I'm gonna do is take about 50%, a little bit less than 50% of this, which is gonna be about 170, 175. Okay, that's about 50%. So I'm gonna drop it down to about 150. So we're gonna do 150, for five repetitions. Okay, so you're gonna do your warm up. you're gonna do 150 for five repetitions. Then I'm gonna add about 30 to 35 pounds every single time. So if we add 35 pounds, we get to 185. We're gonna do that for a very easy set of three. Another 30 to 35 pounds, we're looking at about 215 for two. Another 30 to 35 pounds, we're looking at 250 times one, that's a five. 250 times one. And from here you can see what you start doing. That's a very, very easy single. That's you know 90 pounds less than, uh, than your one rep max, not, not 95 pounds less than your one rep max, your estimated one rep max. We're gonna keep adding to that. So now the 30 to 35 pounds takes us to 285 times one. Another 30 pounds on top of that, we're at 315 for one. So you can see what we're doing, we're building up slowly. We're hitting nice, confidence-boosting, easy one rep maxes. Taking a little bit of time in between each one, anywhere from three to five minutes, depending on how the athlete feels. Now, 315 for one, very easy one rep max, okay? 345, is that gonna be too big of a jump? Well, it's up to you. Maybe instead of three, jumping all the way up to 345, maybe we split the difference. Maybe we do 330 depending on how your athlete feels. 330 looked awesome, sweet. Maybe we go 345 or 350, and we do that for one. See how it feels. 330 looked really hard, well maybe then we go up to 335, 340. We never wanna end on a miss. We wanna make good selections. So you can use a percentage-based system, and you can really do the math and do 40%, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 of the estimated one rep max. Or you can do what I do here, which is try to use percentages in the beginning. Okay, add about 10% every time. But from there, what you wanna do is make general jumps, make small jumps, make jumps that you know the athletes are gonna be confident doing, and then keep working up in weight. No different than if this was a powerlifting meet, you'd have your opener, which is a very easy one rep max. Then you would have something that's a little bit more difficult. And then you would have your third attempt, which is a really big PR, trying to really knock it out of the park and go for it. Be smart choosing it, you don't wanna overload, but get something that they are going to easily get. Now, say you throw, through, you throw 345, 350 on there, and they smoke it. You're gonna jump up to 380? Absolutely not. Maybe you add another 10 pounds, you go to 360-ish, and you try that out. Now, they hit 360, but it's really, really slow. The form starts to break down. They're grinding the weight up. It looks a little sloppy and gross. Call it right there. Maybe that happens here, you call it right there. Maybe it happens right here call it right there. You never want to finish on a miss. You always want to finish with the athletes leaving more confident and leaving feeling great about their weights. Okay. Remember in the grand scheme of things, if you have our in-season training program that we sell on the website, I'll put a link to it up there. Everything is based on a percentage of your one rep max. So you need to find that one rep max just so you have a number to base it on. You don't have to go crazy and you know try to really push heavy, 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 crazy, crazy weight because if they hit 360 for one, what's 50% of 360? 180. If they hit 365 for one, we're still at 180 when you round it down. They hit 370 for one, 
Okay, now we're at 185. So we're not making massive jumps of weight when we get to our working percentages, even if we hit five or 10 pounds more than we think we can. Okay, it's not gonna make that massive of a difference. It's not gonna make a huge difference in the long run. We just wanna push them, get them working heavy, get them, get them moving more weight than they have moved in the entire 13 weeks and probably in their entire life. Get them confident, get them feeling energized, get them feeling pumped up for the start of the season. That's the whole point. And and again, this is both for squat, bench, and for deadlift, all right? So here's what I want you to do. If you haven't done so already, like we said in the beginning, subscribe to this video, uh, to this channel, and click the notification icon. Click that little bell icon, okay? Over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be going through all form and technique work for shot put, both glide and rotational, because I know that's what's gonna help the most amount of people as we get into the season. And then when we get into outdoor season, believe it or not, that's only three months away from right now. When we get into outdoor season, that's when we're gonna to start to talk a little bit more about discus and rotational shot and go really in depth with those. So make sure, subscribe to the channel, click the videos that just popped up to see the rest of this playlist, get working in the weight room. Hopefully you've been doing really well this entire time. Hit some new maxes, leave confident, and have a great track season.